I wrote the first three books of the concert etudes, the works on Strauss, Mahler, and Brahms, for my doctoral dissertation at the University of Maryland. I got the idea because I spent a lot of time working during my dissertation or my doctorate degree on the music of Franz Strauss, and in the course of that I discovered 17 concert studies on the themes of Beethoven. It took, for the most part, excerpts you would play of Beethoven in preparation for an audition or an excerpt out of the piece that was extremely difficult, he took that excerpt and made it into a complete etude that was a concert style etude that could be played as an unaccompanied solo piece or something out of context, but something to really develop that particular excerpt. Uh, so in the course of the project for the dissertation, I wrote 14 concert studies on the themes of Richard Strauss. I wrote 16 concert studies on the themes of Mahler and I wrote 15 concert studies on the themes of Brahms. So this takes these little snippets you have from Mozart and Beethoven and Haydn that are really cool little sections of music that just don't go anywhere because the horn didn't have valves. That was about all the horn could do for that segment of the orchestration. So I wanted to take those little excerpts that we might practice and expand those out to a full length concert etude. One of the most common excerpts we see on auditions and one of the excerpts that I spent the most time with working on uh, throughout my horn career I'm sure most students do as well, is the opening passage to Ein Heldenleben. And in fact, I thought that particular excerpt was so important and had so many different facets to it that I wanted to break it down into three different etudes. So etude number seven out of the Strauss book uh, is basically an arpeggio study. So it takes the arpeggiation, the thematic material of the Strauss, and we just do a constant series of up and down arpeggios all over the horn. Uh, there's no rhythmic variety in it. It's, it's just constantly singing. So that we're just getting that free flow and learning to blow through the excerpt without having that stress or that anxiety. Uh, from high to low, everywhere in between, it's really getting that flexibility that you need to play the Strauss, eight, uh, the Strauss excerpt. And this one focuses primarily on that opening bar, that arpeggio that becomes so difficult for so many of us to play, and especially in an audition, you're, you're going in cold. Ba -da 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 -da. It doesn't always come out like you would want it to. So I take that opening arpeggio and put it into a bunch of different keys, moving up and down all over the horn, and it's really, again, designed to make sure that opening arpeggio really sings, really pops. You're comfortable playing it lower, you're comfortable playing it higher, because I'm going through all these different key permutations and changing things up. And in the course of that, it makes a really fun and a really exciting etude to play. I think when you go back and then apply that to Heldenleben, you'll find this sense of freedom that, oh, this is not, I can relax with this opening arpeggio. I don't, have to, I don't have to force the arpeggio. I can just make a singing musical line with this arpeggio. So the last etude is etude number 14. And this one focuses specifically on the 16th runs that are so often difficult to make clear in the Ein Heldenleben excerpt. So the etude itself is changed up a little bit. I put it into 5-4 time which obviously is not true to the original Strauss. But I'm really focusing on sustaining a note, going through that 16th sequence, landing on a note. Sustaining a note, going through that 16th sequence, landing on a note. I myself, when I'm getting ready to play a particular piece, uh, I now know that I, I have an etude for that. Like they say, there's an app for that. I have an etude for that now. So if I'm getting ready to play uh, Till or Heldenleben or Don Juan or one of the Mahler symphonies, I go to those etudes that I've written based on the excerpts that I know I'm going to encounter, and I practice that etude in preparation for playing the piece. And really don't even look at the piece until about a week out before I'm actually you know slated to play the piece. And I find that I'm really ready to jump into whatever excerpt that I might find challenging. There's no issues getting into it. And then, if you just want to 
play through the books and have fun because they really are fun etudes. They're, they're a lot of fun to play. They're very challenging. Obviously, they're beyond what we want expect with our Koprosh etudes. Uh, they're not so challenging that they're not fun to play, uh, but they're really challenging, they're really fun, they're really musical. You could play them as unaccompanied pieces on a recital. That's what they're designed to do, so you can really enjoy yourself. ¶¶